I think this is a very common question that we get asked in the medical field. And one of the things that we have seen in early data that's come out from countries such as South Africa and the UK is that the length of time of illness and the severity of illness tends to look like it's shorter. What we have seen is faster transmission, um, but hasn't had a proportionate increase in rise to hospitalizations and ICU stays as we would expect if it was another variant like Delta. Because Omicron has a shorter incubation period and can be more rapidly transmitted, our testing mitigation strategies that we did before for large swath testing, maybe on a weekly basis or a bi-weekly basis, may not be as effective now. What we wanted to do, knowing that some members of our community really rely on this testing to use as another tool in their tool belt, is that we wanted to make sure that if you were getting tested, we had adequate ability to give you a fast response. So let's say, for example, if 5,000 people got tested in a day, that would really strain our lab to be able to give a timely result. So if it takes us four days to get you a lab result that you took earlier, that lab test is really no good. And so our goal is to try to trim that test result time as much as possible. And we can do that by helping kind of regulate the number of tests that are being coming through on a daily basis. So we're asking members of our community this year to use hall pass to actually register for a test. And so you basically book a reservation when you go to hallpass.unc.edu. You can still go to the Carolina Union to be tested. It's still the same collection method. It's still the same process but as opposed to allowing walk-ins as well, we're working off of a reservation system. We still have the ability for people who are asymptomatic to be tested through the Carolina Together testing program. We don't necessarily recommend widespread testing of asymptomatic individuals because what we're trying to do is think about the global picture of testing supplies and then also adequacy in, in testing. And then the other thing that I really want people to kind of take to heart about testing is that um, that test is only really as good as that test in that moment of time that you take it, right? And so just because you get a negative test result doesn't mean that the next three, four, five days takes you away from any exposure that you could have to COVID. So um, th these are the important elements that I think are, are very kind of uh, pivotal to making sure that people view tests in the right way and utilize them in the right way. Um, and it doesn't take away 100% of the ability to say, I had a negative test, there's no way I'm going to get COVID in 24, 48 hours. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why this context of asymptomatic testing may not be as helpful. But again, we know that our community has asked for it, and that's why we're continuing the testing program to have access to it. So um, reservations can be booked online at hallpass.unc.edu and um, utilizing that on the schedule of Monday through Friday testing. symptoms sometimes uh, we use them as a correlate to what we can think of in terms of disease for a lot of the respiratory illnesses that we have that usually happen at this time of year you would feel like you would have very similar symptoms so cough fever headache chills body aches um, those things tend to be the most prominent symptoms um, more so with Delta, we saw things and prior strains of the coronavirus or COVID-19, we saw a loss of taste and smell. Um, not necessarily saying that that can't happen with Omicron, just not as prevalent. It's a really good question. I think we get asked this a lot is what, what do you do in the case of um, when you have symptoms and what are the best things to do? So I think um, in general, we would hope that people understand that if you're feeling ill, the best thing to do, especially if you work at the university or if you're a student at the university is to stay at home. Um, don't come to class, don't go to work. Um, get tested to see if you are positive because that actually starts the clock on your isolation period, which is really important for us to know too and being able to say you had a prior infection is safe for you to get back into school or to work. And then for some of our members of our community, they could potentially, if they are positive, be eligible for outpatient treatments such as monoclonal antibodies or a couple of the new oral medications that have come to market. Um, most namely that you might have heard of them called Paxlovid or Malnipiravir. They're two newer oral medicines that help treat the symptoms of COVID-19 um, in the outpatient setting as opposed to being in the hospital. 
when we think of our best mitigation efforts, our best mitigation strategies, it's really doing two things. One, um, people who are vaccinated um, have a lower chance of contracting the Omicron variant or COVID-19. And that number actually goes down even more or there's more protective effects if you're um, boosted. So the number one best strategy that we can say for our community members is get vaccinated. And then when you're eligible for a booster, get a booster. And the second one is to wear uh, wear a mask whenever available. And we're encouraging people to wear a well-fitted mask. We're actually requiring that all um, members in our community in an indoor setting wear masks in our classroom, really working on trying to do um, at least the two first pillars, which would be vaccination and boosting, and then wearing a mask as much as possible, especially indoors. In terms of masks, I, I again would encourage people to go to um, the CDC's website where they recommend um, how you should wear a mask. The most important thing for masking is that um, if you are wearing a mask, it should be what we call a well-fitting mask. So that means a mask that's not very loose, not one that's hanging down below your nose or below your chin, not one that has a lot of extra gaps on the sides. Um, the CDC does say that cloth masks are acceptable if they're a three-ply cloth mask, um, and then also surgical masks are, are beneficial. Um, KN95 masks or N95 masks have been asked a lot about, you know, do we need to wear those all the time? Do we have to have them? Um, the thing that I caution about with KN95 or N95s is, again, if it's not fitted appropriately and it's loose all the way around, you're just as um, susceptible to being able to, to get the virus. And so the most important thing is that you wear a well-fitting mask. This is really um, a challenging situation because there's kind of different progressive routes based off of your status on how you're vaccinated and boosted. But the current guidance on this, um, based off of what the CDC has recommended, is that if you are a close contact of someone and you are vaccinated and have received your booster, then what you can do is monitor for symptoms. You don't need to quarantine or isolate, but you should monitor for symptoms and you should be tested if you develop any symptoms. If you are unvaccinated or if you are vaccinated with a primary series, but you have not received your booster, then you are to quarantine and monitor for symptoms, um, but then you should receive a test later on at around day five, if available. So what we're basically saying, and I think that the important part in this is that really the key measure here is to um, get tested if you're symptomatic, monitor for symptoms, and wear a mask as much as possible. What we're trying to do here is maintain um, a semblance of our community and importance in learning in an on-campus university in an instructional mode that makes the most sense. So um, what we want is for students to thrive in college, to be able to learn, our faculty to be at the excellent educators that they are. Um, and I do believe that one of the ways that the university has tried to do this is by promoting the use of vaccinations and boosters in our community as much as possible. Um, at last count, we had had about 93% of our students and about 93% of our faculty that had received their primary immunizations. We are going to turn on the ability in our same platform where you um, told us if you had received a vaccination to be able to tell us also if you have received a booster. Um, so we are encouraging people when that becomes live to please go out and do that because I think it's gonna help us just have a semblance of understanding how many people in our community are boosted. Um, the other thing that I mentioned is that, you know, really working on trying to mask as much as possible um, and to um, use um, good judgment whenever you're around a lot of people. And so one of the things that I think to promote is like when you're in a dining situation, if you could try to limit the amount of time that your mask is down, that's always helpful. If you can try to congregate in smaller groups, that's always helpful. Outdoor activities. I know that the weather is changing and it's cold, but it's also sometimes nice to be out in some brisk weather and just enjoy the, um, the outdoors and in a walk or, or be in a, in a group with others. Those things are also helpful in terms of being able to decrease the threshold of being around uh, the virus for a prolonged period of time if it's, on, uh, if it's in the setting that you're working at or you're around others that have it. 
I would say that there's really like the two big keys to our semester being successful <clears throat> are really pushing and, and making sure that people are promoting and encouraging their friends, their family, their community to get vaccines and boosters. And then masking as much as possible is a really helpful thing. Um, there's nothing wrong with wearing a mask all the time. If you feel more comfortable wearing a mask all the time, there hasn't been a widespread recommendation that masking outdoors is beneficial at this time. But if, the, if a person feels more comfortable just leaving a mask on all day, we should encourage that on our campus. So um, we do definitely want everyone to abide by the masking rules in the residence halls, in our classrooms, and to make sure that masking is done in an appropriate way at all times. We do have, I know that some people ask if the university has provided certain types of masks. So if you go to the UNC webpage and the maps portion of that, so I believe it's maps.unc.edu is the webpage. It actually outlines on that webpage the, uh, the masking stations that do have the three ply um, masks, disposable masks that are available there. So if someone needs to pick one up, they can go to one of those stations, pick up a mask and use that for their classroom or for while they're on campus.